Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a update of your BIOS with the system actually being intact and not using the USB flashback option. Now, this is going to be absolutely perfect for those of you that are possibly upgrading your processor from one generation to another, but using the same motherboard, and you've already got a working system to start from. So, let's get on with it. Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to update your BIOS. Now, this is for MSI motherboards. The process is gonna be very similar across the range, although this is specific to the one we're using, which is the MSI B650 Edge Wi-Fi. Obviously, do make sure you get the right BIOS for your motherboard. If you're not sure of any of this, which we're gonna go through, I'll say in advance now, if you do want help with this, head over to our Discord chat, and we'll try and do our best to help you through. You can connect to us by other means as well, such as email or just leaving a comment on this video. But to be completely honest with you, you're going to get a much, much faster response from our Discord. Basically, emails I check kind of once a day, that sort of thing. So if you do want a quick response, head over to the Discord. Again, links for that will be in the video description. Please do check those out. And also, there will be links to MSI website, etc. for the BIOS for this particular board. Again, do make sure you get the right BIOS for your board. But with all that said, let's get on with it and uh, we'll take you through it step by step. Okay, so this is our Windows desktop. So I'm gonna first of all prepare a USB stick. So I'm gonna plug this into the computer. And there we go, this one's actually empty. I would suggest just for your kind of own sanity and for just peace of mind and all that, right click on the drive, choose format, make sure it's FAT32 and default allocation size. If there's any volume labels in here, get rid of those because some MSI boards don't like it for some reason. If there's a volume label, I don't know why, some do, some don't. Yours, your mileage may vary, but get rid of it, it just makes it life easier. This is gonna erase everything on the drive, so make sure that uh, you're happy with that, and make sure it's under 32 gigs, as we've probably already said. You get the warning here, yeah, we're okay with that. So that is our drive formatted, so we can close this now. Now we can go onto the internet, and essentially what you wanna do is go to the MSI website, if I click on that one there, yep. Yeah. So go to, obviously, the appropriate site for your specific motherboard. This is the MPG B650 Edge Wi-Fi, and head over to support, and we want BIOS, which is normally the first one that comes up anyway. Now, it's something which a lot of people ask about this, I generally say go for the newest BIOS, so there's gonna be one at the top. If yours says something like this, and it's got a beta version there, don't be too concerned for most of the modern boards these days. The betas are generally pretty stable, and very often the beta will actually become the full version after a short while. So like this one here, 151 became version 15 very shortly after, normally a week or so's testing. It's the same BIOS, basically just the uh, kind of like the, the final version of it, same here. So the one I'm on currently I think is 162, as we'll see a little bit later on in the video. And the latest one is 16. So yeah, 162 isn't higher, 164, became 1.6. You can tell which is the newest one by the dates up there. So the one I'm on is back from April, end of April, and this one is from the start of June. So we're gonna go with this one. So we click on download. We'll save it to our desktop. Nice simple place to find it. And we can minimize that, it won't take very long at all. And there is our zipped file. So we can right click on that and choose extract all to unzip the file. And we'll just let it extract to where it wants to. And normally at this point, we'd go into the folder and we would rename this file for doing a USB BIOS flashback. But because we're doing it actually within the BIOS, this is the file name that is expecting to find on the USB stick. So all I wanna do is to right click on it and we'll choose copy or cut, whichever you want to. Go over to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. So copy and paste onto the stick. There we go, that is done. So now what we wanna do is turn the PC off and go back into the BIOS. I'm using OBS, so I better close that down first before we do that. So I'll stop OBS now and, and we'll come back to you when we're in the BIOS. Now, if you're not too sure how to get into the BIOS for your specific machine, most of them, it's just a case of mashing the delete key after you turn the power on to your PC or press the power button. Alternately, you can go to the Windows Start here, hold down the Shift key whilst going over to Start and shut down or, or restart, sorry. Hold the Shift key and keep the shift key held down until you get the Windows blue screen, and then you've got the advanced options for troubleshooting, etc. Anyway, we'll shut this down now, and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, the BIOS screen. So in order to flash the BIOS from actually within the BIOS via USB, 
pretty easy to do. So we go down the bottom in this bottom corner, just here, where it says M flash, and you can click on there. It'll say system will automatically reboot and enter flash mode. Do you want to enter flash mode? We definitely do. So let's click on yes. And after a short while, you should enter flash mode. Do apologize for the fans ramping up slightly. It's because we're in the bar. So it's basically going to guide you through this. So it's already recognized what we've got. And it's going to do the build dates there. It is going to be a little bit confusing because the way that the numbering goes. So it's got version 1.62 with the older build date. But it's got version 1.6, which is newer. So generally, the newer would be higher. But in this instance, it doesn't quite work out like that anyway. So it has found the drive. And it's basically asking what you want to do. Are you sure you want to select this file? That is the one, combo AM5PI 1007A. And yes, we are sure we want to do this. Now, while the bar is updating, obviously don't do anything to the computer. Ideally, if you have got some form of UPS, make sure that it is on, active and charged, etc. Don't unplug anything from the computer if you can help it. Don't turn off the sockets. Basically, you want your power to be as stable and as constant as possible until this thing has got to 100% at least. Also, if you're slightly concerned and you want to uh, stop the process, you can not because the mouse and keyboard will be disactivated or disabled whilst this is updating. So just chill, grab a cup of tea or something. It shouldn't take too long and uh, just wait for it to do its thing. You will find once this is done, it will automatically reboot and it will probably try to go straight into Windows. Now this generally is a bad thing, so do be prepared that when it gets to 100%, when it does the reboot for the first time, you wanna press the delete key to go back into the BIOS and actually reconfigure your settings, which I will very quickly show you once it's done. Okay, so now we're at 90%, so get ready to be uh, fast on the finger with the delete button, so you can go back in and configure your BIOS. And there we go, so the PC has now turned itself off, so we can start mashing the delete key now, ready for accessing the BIOS. And there we go, so we're back into our BIOS. So most of you are probably gonna to wanna to just turn on your Expo settings. So you go into memory and choose what your settings are. I'm gonna go with Expo Profile 1, which I know this works fine with. You can check things like storage, make sure all that is right. Fan info, go ahead and change your fan settings, curves, etc. Which uh, actually I will do, but I'll do from the advanced mode. So in advance, I'm going to OC. There's some things in here which I do choose myself, and that is the memory context restore. Now works best in auto, or at least it should do. And also, I'm going to go into the power section. And also, I want to go into the AMD overclocking. Advanced CPU and actually config TDP. I'm going to set to 65 watts just to keep things cooler. You can, if you want to, go into precision boost overdrive and you could do that set thermal point 65. Basically, does kind of the same sort of thing anyway. Or if you want to, go into advanced and you can set your uh, limits wherever you see fit with a little bit of undervolting maybe, or PPT limits, that sort of stuff. Uh, curve optimizer, we'll go into all cores, and we'll go into negative, and we'll do a, a magnitude of 30, which I know this one works well with. So again, we can do all that. So that is pretty much it for that section, but I'm gonna go into hardware monitor and just quickly configure my fans. So CPU fan is a PWM one. So I can set it as PWM. Our system fans are PWM also. And we'll uh, just adjust those so they sound a little bit better. And there we go, they sound much better already. That is uh, pretty much it. So close this, close this section. It'll tell you what you're gonna save. Again, most of you probably just XMP, maybe, uh, some fan settings if you want to. When you're happy, click on yes. And then the system will reboot for the final time. It'll do another bit of quick RAM training because we've just changed the XMP setting and then we should be loaded up into Windows. 
So something you may find as well when you try to log back into your PC after Boss Flash, you may see that your pin is no longer available due to the change of the security settings because you've effectively kind of reset your FTPM. So for things like BitLocker and all that kind of stuff, you probably want to turn those off as well. But you will need to go and set up your pin once again when you're done. So just make sure you do that, then you can go back into Windows as you would normally. Okay, so there you go. There is how to update your BIOS using a USB flash stick directly from inside the BIOS, which uh, in my personal experience is the better way of doing it if you possibly can. Of course, if you're going from uh, one generation to another, it's considerably easier. Obviously, if you're doing this for a completely new setup with a brand new processor and you don't have your existing or previous one available, then you will need to use the USB flashback method of which we've done tons of videos on. So just look them up. You'll see them. We'll try and link some of them below as well for you should you need them. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.